well, thank you guys for being here. Hey, Curious Jen. Hey, Nadie. Hey, True Crime Snoopy. Adrian, good to see you. Hey, Music City Mom. I broke my glasses. It's been hurting my... Oh, no, that sucks. <laughs> I duct taped them. Oh, my gosh. I've had to tape my glasses before, and I've also wore them around with one arm <laughs> over one ear. Um, hey, Michelle. Hey, Nola Chick. Hey, Dumplings Gammy. Hey, Mod Wife. Struggle is real. KPM. Hey, KK. Pointer lover. Um, I am so excited. Hey, Shabane. Hey, Mia. We have lots of exciting things happening, and I, I can't wait to so housekeeping before we get started. Hello, the mod wife. Let me see. I don't want to miss anybody. Cat Crumb Junkie, Veronica. Good to see you guys. Okay, so number one, last night was incredible. Thank you guys so much. You are just so special and so amazing. And, um, you know, we see a lot of really bad stuff from this platform, but we also see a lot of good. And it makes me so happy and proud to know that what we are putting out into this environment, into the universe is such a powerful and wonderful thing. We raised $2,200 for Gannon. That's two fundraisers we are in his memory. Um, and that's two that we've done in his memory that have reached $3,500. I have put a community post up, but regardless to help prevent and stop child abuse, which is really special. So thank you guys for that. Um, you just don't know how much it, it means to me, especially just because like I, this channel has been my baby and and just to be able to do something really special like that it's it's awesome so thank you guys um awesome tabitha good to see you hey left fan hey cajun girl um hello from dc hey marina gosh it's been a long time since i've been to dc okay so the next thing i want to get into because we're going to do case files today there's quite a few things i want to look at that we haven't talked about yet because we're going to be busy these next few weeks and let me show you a post from curious jen so if you guys haven't subscribed to her or bindi um or melissa jade i want you guys to check them out because they've all been covering the case and the two jens and i have some really exciting stuff coming. So I'm going to drop their channel, everyone's channel in the chat. I really think you'll love everyone. It's, it's funny because the four of us can all look at the same thing, like what we're about to look at, for instance, and we all walk away with a different um, perspective and different things to say. So, hey, Bindi, there you are. Good to see you. It was awesome to make a difference for someone. I know. Thank you for helping me, Music City Mom. You are just such an awesome, awesome help, and I appreciate you. Kate, Kate, it was Kate Kate's idea, dang it. It was your idea, and thank you. Hey, Leilani from Germany. Um, That's so cool, from Germany. My grandmother came here from Germany during World War II with my grandpa. He was American soldier, and um, yeah. I am positive Gannon is smiling down. He was so special. We will never forget you, Gannon. Absolutely. And, you know, that's what I was thinking today. Like, I've, you see a lot of hateful, just, I mean, some of these drama communities, they have gotten so low. They, they've they lost their humanity in a way. And to be able to do something so positive and, and for such a special kid, because Every kid is special, right? And everyone that we talk about, every victim matters. But Gannon was such a loving, kind-hearted, sweet little boy. This little boy, I mean, how many 11-year-olds do you know that are saving things in a box for when you have your child, for when they have their child, I mean, you're, you know, and for when they grow up and get to be a dad. And he just, ah, he was an amazing little, little boy. Hey, true crime crazy. Um, <laughs> Kate, Kate, I caught the replay and it was amazing. Thank you, Shay. I'm so proud of all of us. Hey, Queen Bella, good to see you. You need my Venmo? Um, there we go, Nightbot. So, okay, let me read to you guys Curious Jen's post because we have really good things coming. So, behind the scenes with receipts. This is important to us because a lot of channels, you know, we have have crowdsourced for some of these files. We, uh, the original case file and the pretext calls and the calls that we're about to get very soon, very, very, very soon. Um, 
but we wanted to purchase this gel file ourselves. So let me just read this, but regardless, either way, it's important to show you guys because I just think it is. You guys put a lot of your time, effort, and energy into this as well. So I just I want you guys to know how much we appreciate you all. So she says, behind the scenes with receipts, more public information coming this week. Notice how she has public information capitalized because this is public information. Yes, we're paying for it. Uh, but still, you know, the reason that we're doing that is so that we can share it with you guys, the public. So we ordered the Letitia Stalk gel file with the collective intention of covering it and then releasing it to the public. It was important to Allie, Jin Liu and me that we pay for this one ourselves for the most part as a sew it of good faith gesture to let you all know how much we appreciate you. Rachel and Callie helped too. We are as excited about this content as you are and we're more than willing to spend our own money as well. We We've also ordered one month of gel calls that were crowdsourced. That batch was $303 ordered October the 10th. We hope to receive those calls within the next couple of days, and we hope to have the file by the end of this week. If you would like to donate towards future batches or, or um, unadulterated calls, you can donate to her cash app or PayPal. We're not going anybody. If we get any help with the remaining calls, we don't want it to be through YouTube. It just makes things difficult. YouTube takes 50 percent. If you really want somebody that, you know, it's it's convenient and awesome. But also if it's like an, a lump sum of money, it's smarter to do it this way. So all records requested donations will be documented and posted to Jen's website using the sender's first and last initials. We will post El Paso county receipts, sheriff's office receipts for each purchase batch of calls. You will know what we made and you will know what we paid. So then she shared the receipt. This was for the jail file, which was it's 3000 pages of every, you know, I was saying last night, it's going to be so fascinating because this file is going to include all of her little tricks on the way to trial and after it's any incident report anything that's happened in the jail 3,000 pages it sounds like a lot has happened so that was 762 dollars which it's unbelievable the way that they how expensive this stuff is i i still can't believe it um but yeah so that is coming this week i put in a donation that came from someone too if they want to say who they are they can. I just don't like doing that because privacy is important. Right. We all donated a little bit, um, a couple hundred, a few hundred dollars each, uh, pretty much. So we're only using initials from now on. So we are going to get a bunch more stuff. I cannot wait to do that. Um, any info on the days before and after finding Gannon? Well, we'll have to see because we haven't got it yet. But Whatever happened in that jail on those days, we will have the, the reports of it. Um, yes, thank you, Be Real. You guys are the bomb. I love you guys and appreciate you so much. Hey, Danny. So now that you know, um, yeah, 3,000 freaking pages. Now that you know, we've got lots of good stuff coming soon, and we want to we want to continue getting those jail calls. So... YouTube is unfair. Why do you say that, little red riding head? Hey, Jay. Good evening from, good evening, lovely G-Man fam. Howdy from Maryland. <laughs> Subtle, right? <laughs> hey, Mary Jane Doe. Okay, so now we can get into all the things. Replay was amazing too. Freaking funny, everyone, sis. An amazing job. Thank you, Tiff. Um, oh, I'm sorry, KK. Well, that's all right. You donated the idea. Hey, cutie pie. Rhonda, hello, Alex. It was a great fundraiser last night. I haven't laughed that much in a long time. Got news of my 10th test this last Thursday. Oh, we'll watch going through treatments. Oh, Rhonda, I'm so sorry. You know, oh, sometimes I'll get letters or messages from you guys that are just going through things like that. And um, it really makes us, you realize, like, I don't know. It just makes you realize things about life. And and um, it also is really special to be able to help you guys like cheer up and just have a few minutes where you're not thinking about your life. I'm a baby. I'm sorry. OK. So 
are these things usually that pricey tab of the, I don't know. I just also put in a request for Chris Watts uh, with Amber, me and Amber Truth Seeker with um, the gel. And I haven't got a cost on that yet, but I'll be able to let you know after that. Oh, yes, Amy Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Um, actually, I'll drop the Curious Jen and Bendy Lou in the chat right now. It's just awesome to be able to like help you guys get through that. And you know what? I use YouTube for that too. Like there are so many times where I put something on and just listen to that and don't think about what I would usually be thinking about. It's been such a blessing for me in so many ways. Hey, Natasha. The thing is you have to prove insanity at the time of the crime, not how crazy you act a fool in jail and transport. It is. It's a lot. Well, I don't think it's exactly 50, but it's damn close. And I want to test that soon because people say different things. But hey, MK, I love the face off. OK. I'm just checking your comments for a second and then um, we're going to get started. It depends on the state in the case. I think it's because El Paso spent so much on the investigation. They're trying to recoup those costs. Hey, the troubleshooter. All right. So now let's flip over. I was going through the case file and I found some things. Now, I didn't know the details of all of this. However, because Curious Jen is just an expert and brilliant like that, she has filled me in on some of this stuff. So I hope that it's in order the way that I sent it. Let me see. Because we're going to go through when they found Gannon's phone, when they found Gannon's switch, we're going to watch and see them getting reports of of different you know tips a couple other tips and also um uh, uh why is my brain not working oh yes when they were moving when Letitia and her family were moving her stuff from Colorado we're going to look at some things from that because they were watching they talk about watching you know someone pulling a pink suitcase I didn't see a green one but still I think that it's going to be really fascinating to go through this and the perfect thing to talk about before we get these calls hey Nicole hey hippie chick good to see you guys Hey, Becky P. I'll be driving soon. Tuesday is bowling night. I like to take my boys bowling. I don't know if Bentley's ever been. Oh, he's been, but he was like three. Jacinda, good to see you. I'm happy you made it to this one. You made me sad when you're like, I cried when I didn't make the love. Um, okay. So let's just start. I don't know the order. That's about the the summary of what we're going to go through, but I don't remember the exact order. I've put them here. I just grabbed them from the file and threw them in here for us to discuss. Hey, Adrian. Hey, Katie Rose. Okay. So I, Deputy Rena McClellan, am currently assigned to El Paso County Sheriff's Law Enforcement Patrol Division. On February 26th of 2020, I was working in El Paso County, Colorado. Today, I was temporarily assigned to the investigation section of the LEB. Um, she reviewed footage from the rent -a car I reviewed video footage from Enterprise. The following was seen while reviewing the footage. So on January 30th, um, the video shows several people waiting in line at the counter renting vehicles. Look at this. The timestamps are 10.55.55 through 11.11.30. That is just, it's crazy. I don't know. Numbers are really, that's interesting to me. Like 11.11. .11, and then look here again at 11.11. .11, all of them. Wow. Okay. Sorry, that was Gannon. You know, that was a special thing with Gannon and his mom. Um, it's 11-11, make a wish, that kind of thing. So and you have to remember they had a long distance relationship for half the time. And that's that's just tough. My brothers and sisters lived far away and my dad had partial custody and we it was really tough on everybody. OK, so this video shows several people waiting in line and at the counter renting vehicles at approximately 1056 family members of Letitia are seen getting into line her mother and brother were identified as renting the vehicle her mother was seen wearing a black jacket gray and black shirt and scarf and glasses her brother was seen wearing a black columbia hat black shirt and tan jacket 
At 11.05, one of the females is seen walking up to the desk to rent the vehicle. Letitia's brother is in the background on the phone, and a third female wearing a gray jacket, jeans with black hair, sits by the brother. At 11.11, all three of them walk outside. Just subtle little hints of, you know, Gannon. The 1111. At approximately 1118, the vehicle that was rented is seen leaving the exit booth of the Enterprise. A silver Nissan sedan displaying Colorado plate exists the exits the parking lot. This vehicle was occupied by three people. On February 1st, the Nissan is seen being returned to the Denver International Airport. The vehicle is occupied by Letitia's brother, her mother, and another female. After dropping off the vehicle, all three of them are seen walking towards the bus and getting on the bus around 1317. The following items and luggages were seen coming out of the vehicle and going on to the bus. One white purse. One red roller suitcase, one roller pink suitcase, one white and gray purse, a brown roller luggage. All of these items appear to be the same luggage that flew with the individuals into Denver International. The following was seen while reviewing footage from the Colorado Springs Enterprise. At an unknown time, the Nissan rented in Denver is seen pulling into the parking lot of the Enterprise. The family members from Denver International, Letitia and Blank, are seen getting out of the Nissan. At an unknown time, all the family members are seen walking into the lobby of Enterprise. What did I do here? I left a, what I was watching in the corner. Sorry. <laughs> Um, at an unknown time, some of the family members are seen leaving the Nissan and others remain renting a white Sprinter van. Nothing further at this time. Um, which then I cropped it. I didn't mean to leave that in here. Um, I was listening to some beauty drama about, I don't know, <laughs> some beauty influencers. Hey, Lucia. 11-11 reminds me of my dad. All right, Bendy. <laughs> These jokers want to eat dinner every night. <clears throat> okay. So now, here's the next report in here. And like I said, I grabbed everyone for a reason, but I don't remember the order they're in. So um, as we go, we'll discuss. On Wednesday, February 26th of 2020, I, Detective Marissa Williams of the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, met with several other detectives currently assigned follow-up task with this case. I learned that information relating to Letitia's use of Gannon's phone, and I'm assuming, but it's of redacted. Um, and curious, Jen, if I got that wrong, let me know. But Letitia's use of blank phone was important to the case. I'd previously spoken to Leslie Hicks, or maybe someone else's actually, with Leslie Hicks with Academy School District 20, who had unwittingly told me she called blank phone number blank because Letitia had given it to her as an employment reference, allegedly for a Connie Huddle. Do you guys remember she gave out Gannon? Gannon's phone number for a reference, and I think somebody else's too. Um, I'd pre let's see. However, when Miss Hicks called the number, she saw the caller ID come up as blank and heard children in the background. She asked if she was speaking to Letitia, and the female speaking to her pretended to be Connie and quickly made an excuse to hang up. I did further research into this contact. Research into phone records. I reviewed blank cell bright report and noted there were no incoming or outgoing calls captured after 12 16 2019. This is likely indicative of information having been manually deleted. I then checked the records received from AT&T reference search warrant 2456, which requested records relating to these phone numbers. I searched the documents provided for voice calls relating to blank phone number. I found the following calls from Leslie Hicks blank recorded for blank's phone number. Where did I put that? Well, regardless, it's now it's just the calls and we heard that in court, but I thought that was interesting to see Harley's number. I don't know. She definitely gave, okay, there we go. She gave both Gannon and Harley for Connie Huddle. Thank you. I knew, I remembered she definitely gave Gannon's. 
Hey, JoJo. Hey, Sarah Jane. She used Harley's phone, too. She used, you know, she also used Harley's, like, would message from her pretending to be Harley and things like that. Okay. Now I grab the next one is just their, um, her credit card charges. <clears throat> and I don't know. I just thought it was interesting to look at. So. we go back to January 15th, we have Delta Airlines. They rented a car. On the 31st, we have Starbucks. Then we have the budget truck rental, Candlewood Suites, the Grubhub Seamless. I don't know. Is that like a DoorDash? Then we have two Walmart charges that were approved, Candlewood Suites again, and then we have a budget truck rental that was declined, which is kind of interesting. And there's, here's another record of Petco, Budget, Candlewood Suites, um, Hibachi, Chick-fil-A, AT&T, Panera, Dollar General, ATS Car Rental, ATS Car Rental. Amber, <laughs> I wonder if you can see when she bought the cigarettes that she put in Cannon's backpack. Yeah, the, um, what do you call those things? Cigars, cigarellos. There you are, Amber. Amber has a lab, so she hasn't really, she's followed this case a lot with us, but she hasn't done a ton of, she hasn't covered it, but she has exceptional work on many other cases. So definitely please check her out tonight. She has a live stream on Delphi, which I think is going to be really interesting. <clears throat> so yeah, but she covers many other cases too. Hey, Tony, did I say hi? I meant to, I read it and <laughs> meant to, but, and one who sees Sometimes I forget, and I do two hellos. Then we have Colorado Springs, Budget Credit, Petco, Petco. The transactions indicated recent payments for AT&T phone service stays at the Candlewood Suites in both Florida and Texas and vehicle rentals with Budget and ATS car rental. There was a large purchase at Walmart in Texas over $300. Then they talk about some evidence. They have a video of Michelle Fox talking with Letitia and then the insurance and American Express stuff. Love ATS new. I'm a new, new fan and sub. Yeah, she's great. Oh, thank you, Amber. I cannot wait for us to get this stuff this week. Like, I just can imagine what that gel file might include. And I just think it's, yeah. So this report was written March 23rd of 2020. So by this time, she's in prison or she's in jail, I'm sorry. And um, Gannon has been found. So a few days after he's been found on Thursday, February. OK, but they're referencing February 27th, just prior to her being arrested. Um, and, and this many people wonder what she used. And I just pulled this because it kind of is part of that, what she used when she committed the crime. You know, what did she hit him with? What did she, what knife did she use? That kind of stuff. Did she use the box cutter? So on Thursday, February 27th, Detective Bethel of the Sheriff's Office assisted with an investigation of a missing child. Sergeant Hubble and Mark Riley and I, Sergeant, Sergeant, <laughs> Sergeant Hubble contacted Detective Mark Riley and I and informed us the sheriff's office would be releasing the house and its contents to blank. The home was previously seized by the sheriff's office and the locks were changed on the house. Sergeant Hubble retained the keys to the home. Sergeant Hubble provided Riley and I with keys to the home and requested we change the lock on the front door back to the lock that was previously there. Isn't that interesting that they do that? Thank you, Amber. Um, that is just, yeah, that's kind of crazy. So Detective Riley and I responded to the home at noon. We changed the lock on the front door and replaced it with the lock blank had a key to. While we were in the home, Detective Riley and I photographed the upstairs and kitchen area, and I collected a steak knife from the knife block in the kitchen that was missing and knife from it. 
The photos were placed into evidence. The knife was entered into evidence. A scrap sheet was completed for the collection of these items. Um, I will continue to document investigative efforts and additional supplements. So that's what these are. These are just these little reports. They're every time something happens, you know, they do a little report in this case file. They're just all thrown together and you kind of have to make sense of it or just go through it like we are. That's kind of the, the only way I know. Okay. Now on detect, this is the same day, February 27th, Mark Riley um, gives his supplement about going to the house. And he says, in my initial report, I mistakenly documented this was done under a search waiver. So he says, they went to the home to change the locks and collect a kitchen knife. But in a previous report to this, he documented this was done, but it wasn't. But, you know, this is just uh, it shows us the steps of the investigation and mistakes are made. You know what I mean? That's just that. So here we have again, Mark Riley and um, Detective Bethel and I went to change the locks and collect a kitchen knife via waiver from blank. The copy of the waiver is with this report. Um, photographs were taken of the knife prior to collection. The photos were later placed into the Sheriff's Office Evidence Facility under item 636. The knife was placed under item 491. At approximately, now listen to this, the house was returned to the custody of blank after the collection of the knife and the changing of the lock. So I'd say up to Al. At approximately 515, I received a telephone call from blank. I was told his daughter, Lena, had found Gannon's phone. Our arrangements were made for Detective Price to retrieve the phone from Al. So pretty crazy, this woman, if we even want to call her that, this fucking monster. Oh, my God, Brandy. You, oh, my gosh. You guys are something else. Okay, this monster... Um, kills a baby and then takes his phone and uses it to taunt his mother and stuff. They must believe the wounds better match a kitchen knife. I don't know. Hey, Lori. That's all right. I've got that comment actually once before and I actually really have cotton mouth right now, so it's okay. Um, <laughs> okay. We're also going to see about the switch, which, like I said, Curious Jen had told me about that. However, I hadn't read it for myself. Um, so I thought that was interesting to see. So which one is this? Let me see. This is just part of their evidence collection and stuff. I thought it was kind of interesting. What just so we can see, like I said, the steps of like the process. She is a demon. Leticia was very cruel to Aunt Landon and Al with what she did to them after killing Gannon. Absolutely, she was. You know, she's taunting Landon on the phone, um, like the demon she is, but then she's on the phone with Al and Every comment that, um, you know, she gives him every instance, every story, when he just simply repeats it back to her, she gets pissed. She's impossible to deal with. I know, nay. That's all right. Hey, it is what it is. Okay, Brandy. Um, you guys, I think the Swift had more of a role than meets the eye. Brandy, why don't you start a channel and read it to us, and then we will see. How about that? You know what I mean? I'd love to hear it. So, um, I, I'm, I'm very curious about the switch as well, you guys. Okay, let's just continue. So, on February 28th of 2020, I, Detective David Glenn, with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, conducted
did a follow up on this case. Detective Sergeant Rosario Hubble directed Detective John Price and I to Mandan Drive to search for any large bathroom towels that may be bloodstained. Specifically, we were to search for a white or light colored towel that may be bloodstained. Additionally, we were directed to determine if there was a presence of human blood on the exterior of a Tide liquid laundry detergent bottle in the laundry room. Oh, welcome, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you for joining. She taunted Al in a different way. New injuries, no really answering questions. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Laura, thank you so much. Love you, Alex. Love you too. Thanks for working so hard to bring us all this info. We appreciate you. Where are the girls? Yeah, I think they're here, which they are welcome to come up if they want to. Um, but this was kind of like a last minute thing. So I just was like, and we have a lot coming this week, which I'm ex really excited about. I know the difference between you and the gang versus other true crime corners of YouTube. Y'all are as excited about your content as we are. <laughs> that is so true. We were on, I was on the phone earlier um, and I was talking to Melissa and Wolfie actually. And I was telling them like, it's so interesting because we had been having this conversation previously with the gins about like, I, w I would want to watch all of their videos, uh, even if it was on the same document, just because I want to hear from all of them. Like, I've, I just, I don't know. So, yeah. Let me see. Donna. I finally caught a live. <laughs> Kai Crumb Junkie. But she's ordering Grubhub and watching MTV in prison. Crime Curious, I think, Harlot is what I'm assuming. Oh, thank you, Kate Kate. You guys rock. I've been watching and listening for a while. You know what? I'm the exact same. I um won't chat immediately. Bye, KK. Thank you, Anonymous. Allie and the two gins rock band. <laughs> Love you, boo boo. <laughs> okay. So, I, you know, they were specifically asked to search for a light colored towel that may be blood stained. Um, at approximately 1309, we picked up blank at Jackson's Auto located at 411 Royalty Place in Fountain, Colorado. At approximately 1325, we arrived at Mandan Drive with blank. Upon arrival, Detective Price obtained a signed search waiver for the residence. I ask where the bathroom towels were kept. So I'm guessing Al. I ask Al where the bathroom, this is a guess though, where the towels were kept inside the house and he stated they were always folded and placed under the sink inside each bathroom cabinet throughout the house. Blank indicated there were three bathrooms throughout the house, two upstairs and another downstairs in the basement. At 1331, I began photographing the house, including the laundry room, tide bottle, and interiors of all bathroom cabinets in the house. I searched all the bathroom cabinets throughout the house and found one folded white towel in a stack of multicolored folded, folded towels in the master bathroom. Um, I inspected the towel, did not see any stains. I laid the towel across the bathroom floor and photographed both sides of the towel. There were no other white or light colored towels inside the residence. Um, Detective Price indicated he completed Blue Star presumptive kits and determined there was no presence of blood on the exterior of the Tide bottle. Both kits showed a negative result for blood. So at 1356, they left the house and then they dropped blank off at the airport. So let me see. Hey, Roxanne. Happy Halloween. Halloween is so much fun. Oh, thank you, Teacup. Hey, Lips. Good to see you. <laughs> I love you guys. You, uh, <laughs> you always, you're just so good to me, <laughs> Tiff. Okay, let me see. I lost years on Watts. I was looking if Curious Jen commented about that be an owl. Hey, Grammy the Great. <laughs> Curious, Jen. 
Okay, let's continue. The towel piques my interest. Okay, so now we're at Friday the 28th, which is that the next day? No, the same day. Okay. This file as well, if you guys go to read it, if, you, if you're if you interested in reading it yourself, you can check out Curious Jen's website. It's actually in the, uh -oh, in the Nightbot command, and then you'll see cases on the side and go down to Stalk. And you can find the file there. There we go. Um, but if you do read it yourself, it's so confusing. It's not in order. It's not in order by date. It's it's a little bit in order by date, but not really. And it, it's just all over the place. So you really just have a thousand random pages to read of uh, all about the investigation. So Friday, February 28th, Detective Bethel um, assisted with the investigation of a missing child. At approximately 4.57 p.m., I spoke with Courtney Devine. Mrs. Devine is blank school counselor. The phone call was recorded and placed into evidence as item 515. The following is a summary of the phone call and should not be considered a verbatim transcription. Mrs. Devine reported she wanted to let me know about a conversation she had with Blank on Thursday, February 27th, so the day before. And I think that's with Lena. So Mrs. Devine said Lena told her how she moved into a new apartment with her dad, but not her stepmom. Mrs. Devine said when Lena mentioned her stepmom, she put two thumbs down. Lena told Mrs. Devine her stepmom made Gannon disappear. Lena said her stepmom said she took him out with the carpet. Mrs. Devine said she did not know what that meant and changed the subject. Mrs. Devine felt this statement from Lena was odd. Mrs. Devine did mention she believed Lena has overheard her parents talking. How sad. How freaking sad. At eight years old, can you imagine? It is an excellent source just in the she does great. But can you imagine like that is just that is so sad to me that that little baby, you know, is just going to school and and talking to her teachers. Yeah, my stepmom made my brother disappear. She took him out with the carpet. Lena knows exactly what the F is up. Love that sassy little gal. I know KPM. I know, Shauna, it's unbelievable. And so many of these things you don't learn in trial. So if you are truly fascinated with it, like I feel like what we're doing and going through this is just deep, deep diving for all the details. When, you know, I don't know. I, let me stop. <laughs> Can you please send smoke signals or flat as chopper over my house for the next live so I'm not late? Lena knew. So did Harley, Humanimal says. Hey, Humanimal. Have I added you to my night bot? Let's check. I don't know, but I was going to check it. Took him out with the carpet. It's just sad. I know. It is so sad. Okay, Curious Jen. I love Deep Dives Alley. Me too, Steph. I do. And I feel like it's different than us just talking about the same case day after day. We're actually going through legitimate files and information, not just rumors and stuff like that. So I don't know. It just, it interests me. Not that the rumors don't interest me. To an extent, they do. However, I think that this is just something I'd rather spend my time doing, you know? I pray Lena gets all the therapy she may need. Hopefully she's young enough not to comprehend the horror this monster put this family through. Two thumbs down. I know that's right, Lena. It's sad. Yeah. It's sad. It's vital in understanding the whole story. Well, that's like with you and Kelly. Like, that is what brought me. That's how I met Amber. Her and Kelly were deep diving through the Watts discovery, going through every detail, every page, things I hadn't seen before, things that weren't on every channel. And I love that so much. It's one of my favorite like parts of true crime because you don't necessarily get the why, but you still get 
closer to it, I guess, or I don't know. And it offers a little bit of closure regardless. Hey, Kel Kel. Good to see you. Kate, Kate, no. Um, now the report, ah, that's a good question. I think so. I think, I wonder what we could get from that. I'm not sure, actually. I just know that her interview, nobody can get. It's not available. It belongs to Dorothy. No, Tart. She doesn't do YouTube anymore, but she was, and her channel is called CDT. I think it's still in my night bot, so you guys can check it out if you want. Okay, so this is from also that February 28th, Friday, busy day. Um, that would, I would love to see it, Kate Kate. I would love to see Jen and um, Dr. B talk about that. Oh, okay, Tart, see? So on Friday, February 28th, um, doc, uh, Dr. <laughs> Sergeant Hubble conducted follow-up on this case. At approximately 12.30, I received a phone call from dispatch. They wanted to know if they could transfer a blank who was identifying himself as blank grandfather. I told them to transfer blank and I would speak with them. Blank wanted me to know. Two days ago, he was contacted by an anonymous male. The male party asked, is this blank blank? Wait, is this blank? Blank replied, who's asking? The male party then told him he could find his grandson at 39 Calumet PL. Blank said he believed the PL meant place. Blank said he believed it was a prank call, but then the male party told him that Blank was aware of this information. Blank said he tried to get a hold of someone at the sheriff's office earlier, but no one returned his call. So did she get a mail to do this, you know, or was it a prank call? I don't know. I don't know, Amelia. She's taking a break from YouTube. So the first YouTuber I subbed to was ATS and Kelly, then Alex. Oh, Tony, that's so cool. Hold on one sec, you guys. Okay. Lori, I'm happy for you. Megan says, I love the backstory. I kind of understand Letitia. Jealousy and being a complete failure. Harley had a job she didn't. Well, Letitia, she's very jealous. You know, she's even jealous. Sorry. <laughs> My oldest son was like, I just ate the last brownie. Is that okay? And I was like, yeah. And then I, then here comes the little one. Why did you let him have the last brownie? It's dinner time. <laughs> so anyways, as far as Letitia and understanding her, I feel like I do too, to an extent. She's very envious of anybody doing anything, right, that she feels competitive with. She's competitive. Um. She also, like, I think that she devoted and gave a lot of herself to Al and those kids. I think she felt like all of her time was, you know, doing things for the kids while he was chasing his dreams, doing his job. So it's, I think that that was all part of it. Not an excuse at all. I'm sorry, you're a grown ass woman who put yourself in the situation. But I'm way behind in chat. Oh, God, she's smelling Letitia and her, <laughs> Irving. My kids are about to get in trouble. See, I don't like them and I don't want them to hear any of this. They have no business being anywhere near me while I'm streaming. The things we talk about are so gruesome, so graphic. 
and I don't want them around it. I don't want them to hear it. I don't want y'all to hear them. It's different if we're not in the middle of something like this, but it really shakes me up. I just don't like it. Leticia had a job. She just didn't know how to work. I still can't get enough of this case. I think about Gannon every day, how his life was cut down because of that damn evil piece of shit. How terrified he had to have been. Exactly, Kelly. There, that's so true. Plenty of busy moms and wives. But I do think that's part of where she was coming from. Yeah, she wanted to live the Kardashian lifestyle without working. She wanted to say, I have achieved this doctorate or whatever. But she never wanted to put in the work to actually be a teacher, right? Hey, Melanie. Oh, Adrian. I don't know what that says, but I like it. <laughs> Well, you should have made more brownies. <laughs> they are not, I didn't make them. They're those killer brownies. And it's just like a little square and it has four little brownies in it. And it's like cookie and then like this caramel sauce and then brownie. And then there was peanut butter one too. Hey, Carbon Foot Princess. I'm thankful you protect your kids' ears. Yeah, and that's not, not for here, Lori. I just don't like that at all. I don't, I just don't find it appropriate at all. I mean, I'm already scaring my kids enough with the constant telling them because I worry. I don't want them in even outside. Like I need to see them. I need to know where they are. I, I tell them, you know, there are bad people in this world who will take you from me. So you need to know that and not be trusting of other people like just strangers. She's an ass clown. There you go. But do the Kardashians work? <laughs> hey, Victoria. Good to see you, beautiful. You got the prettiest eyes. In your picture, every time I reply to your comments, I'm like, ooh, she got some pretty eyes. There was, yeah. <laughs> Sounds fire. Look them up. They're called killer brownies. Yeah. Did Leticia actually have a teaching certification? Did she go to one? She went to, she did a lot of uh, online college, like Liberty University, that kind of stuff. I know, Mia. There actually is, is I have not heard it, but there's said to be an interview on Zap Girl's channel with a girl that she went to high school with. Um, if the mods want to, they can drop the link. Oh, thank you, Lori. My parents always warned us of bad people who will take us and they'll never see us again. Now I will say the same to my daughter. Well, it's important because it's true, right? Look at Athena Strand, that little girl, you know, fucking FedEx driver, you guys. Like, they're here all the time because my mom, like, she orders nonstop from online. She doesn't do a lot of in-person shopping. And um, we live like right on top of each other. Our houses are right next to each other. So all day long, there's like two or three trucks that come almost every day. She does her groceries and everything like that. The last name was Lowry. Jamie, no, she grew up in North Carolina. But she does mention that Florida stuff in her recent messages, which is interesting. But. I heard that interview. Yeah. Ooh, Lisa. Lisa's the one who made our winning meme. Colorado was the sixth and final state to give Letitia a license to teach our children. I know, Tabitha. I'm not sure either. <laughs> Great value. I love reading y'all's comments, but I got to stop so we can read these. Okay. <laughs> Even though I just enjoy your guys, you guys so much in your minds. So um, we have this tip that was made to um, Gannon's grandfather um, and they give this street. So they did actually try to, you know, make sure this is the thing about online and open cases. When a tip is called in, they're going to have to research, right, and get to the bottom of it. So they do a Google search and they find 39 locations where this street exists. None of them are near there. And then they list out all the other streets in Colorado Springs that begin with a C. And I grabbed a couple photos of a couple of those. There's so many, I didn't grab them all. There's like three or four pages I didn't add to this. 
The lead detective on this case, Bethel, has been in contact with Landon throughout the case. Landon has reached out to Bethel to express concerns on other tips and rumors she has learned about on social media. As of writing of this supplement, Landon has not reached out to Bethel to say she is aware of blank being at Calumet Place. Due to the lack of credible leads to follow up on this lead will not be looked into further. For tracking purposes, this information will be forwarded to Detective Glenn. Nothing further. Then we have um, when they, uh, this is kind of cool, and I think this will be a, similar to what happens with Idaho. On February 28th of 2020, John Price received a photo from CSI Alyssa Berries Ford. The photo is a steel shot pulled from the FARO system. It's a scan of the basement family room of 6627 Mandan Drive. Using this software, CSI Berriesford made measurements of the column and the couch, which are presented on the photo. The purpose of the photo is a re something, a recreation to be able, I can't read that because of the, the words, but it's to do a recreation of the scene if arson testing is to be conducted. So I thought that was kind of cool. Oh, wow, Megan. No one takes a North Carolina teaching license. I moved to New York and had to take a recertification for New York, Massachusetts, and Pennsylvania. Yes, Punksy. We love our Punksy. Supposed to be doing more on her channel soon, so if you haven't checked it out, you should. I just finished the meme show. Oh, God, thank you for that. Thank you for watching. Oh, thank you, Carol. You guys are the best. You guys, it's all you guys. I couldn't do it without you. That's just the truth. And the gins and Melissa and everybody. Um, Amber, because it's not just this case with others. I can't wait to some of the digging that we're hopefully going to get back with the Watts. Okay, so now we're on to Saturday, February 29th. I won't keep you guys too much longer, maybe another half hour. I have quite a few screenshots. I don't know how far we are through them all. But so far, we found some pretty interesting stuff. Gannon's sister talking to her counselor. Um, this white towel situation. The recreation of the room. The anonymous tip. Um, and like I said, the file is full of these kind of things. If you go to Curious Jen's website. So on February 29th, detect this is from Detective Bethel. Um was she was conducting follow-up on this case at 9 11 a.m interesting time fbi special agent casey hughes contacted me via telephone he informed me he received a phone call from blank and was told blank found blank nintendo switch hidden behind some dvds at 6627 mandan drive blank made this discovery while they were packing their belongings to move out of the home I kind of think there's more to this switch, too. Um, and we know about the Google searches. You know, she was curious if, if it could be recovered. Um, I wonder what made her put it back. So I knew that she had put it back because Leticia. Oh, my God. Curious, Jen. Because Jen told us. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to go outside, but it's loud out there right now. Um, but it's nice to be able to see it for myself. Okay. Let me see what else we have here. I know, Shay, she is disgusting. Being a mother-in-law spouse is, being a military spouse is hard, but is also easy as long as you love the person you're with. I have seriously thought about writing her a written letter, Mia, just because of, um, because I really want to respond to what she said. Like, but like, 
with the logical response to tell her just exactly where to go and how to get there. And, but I don't think I'm going to do it. I'm so happy I deleted that app and I'm just happy to dig into the rest of these files. I don't always tell the truth, but when I do, I don't. <laughs> All right, Lori, have so much fun eating your yummy steaks. Okay, so initial call. On February 29th at 9.19 a.m., I, Detective Berklich, received a phone call from Sergeant Hubble requesting I respond to Mandan Drive to meet with Mr. Stalk. Sergeant Hubble informed me Al had found his son's Nintendo Switch, which had originally been reported missing along with his son in the house. I arrived on scene at 9.55 a.m. to meet with blank, which met with negative contact. I then conduct, contacted blank by phone. Blank stated he would be en route to the address and was approximately 10 minutes away. At approximately 10.13, Al, Al arrived on scene and invited me into the house. Al stated he was in the process of moving out of the house and had found the switch hidden behind some DVDs next to the television set in the basement. He stated he was advised to put the switch and case in a plastic bag. Al removed the bag from the top of the refrigerator and handed it to me. I looked inside the bag and observed a black and red carrying case. Inside the case was a Nintendo Switch with the serial number, which Al identified as his son's. The case and game console were collected as evidence. You took her power away when you deleted the app. That's super painful for people like her. But I swear you could feel the evil leaking out of it. Like, and I know that there's still people talking to her. Hell, there are people from other channels, you know, talking to her and stuff. And that's fine. They can, they can do it because I feel like, shit, with the things that she's already told us. And then the other night she tried to, what she did was, this is why I took the damn video down. I'll be frank with you guys. She accused Gannon of being a her words chomo okay and she said and the reason that i say that is because she said after that that it doesn't matter if you're 10 or 100 if you touch somebody that doesn't want to be touched it's wrong and, and she was starting to make excuses and blaming gannon and and once that i realized that fully i got actually i didn't even fully realize it during the live it took me a second it, I had talked to a couple people about it, um, looked at it some more myself, and I just decided, no, I absolutely am not going to be the messenger of this message. That woman has smeared that baby enough constantly from the day she reported him missing. And even before that, with her stories about him pulling a knife on her and all the things, there's just no absolute way that I could do that. And so not only did she say that, because while I was live, we got these messages. I hadn't even seen them yet. We were going through some of the other ones. And I was really excited about this video because I wanted to have a video about these communications, how you can contact these inmates, um, because I, I found other apps and different things like that. She also mentioned my mom in the messages because I have mentioned that my mother retired from a federal prison. Um, and yeah, so I just think it's best for me. We have so much to go through anyways. It's best for me, my channel, all of us to just keep going through that stuff. We have 3,000 pages coming to us, phone calls. It's We have lots to talk about. So, yeah. So, that is the truth of the situation. Oh, thank you, Lil Red Riding Hood. Well, at first, I provided it. Then it, someone that I was emailing with about it was like, Maybe you could put it on members, you know, and I thought, OK, because I, I felt bad. I want people to get to see it. But then I, I thought about that for a, a little bit. And I was like, no, because then you have to pay to see it. And I'm not going to do that either. So, no. <clears throat> she was trying to make you a pawn in the game. She had her chance to, to talk in trial. Absolutely. Me neither, Mia. We should get a guy to write her. <laughs> she would have put it back so she could so she could say they say, look, they searched and didn't even find it. You did. How can you trust them to find? Ooh. 
Oh, thank you, Gabby. For real, Shay. And I'm telling you, I could feel it. And the night that we had this live, it was that night and the next morning. Like, it just, um, like, it felt, I, I can't even describe the feelings I had. I've absolutely never felt like this before over a video. I've been nervous over, like, certain situations or when people have tried to put personal business out there. I've been angry. I've never had, like, a video make me feel like this, like full of adrenaline and heartbreak is the best way I can describe it at the same time. So it's like so sad and disturbing, but you're like energized or you still have this like feeling in you. I don't know. It was just not good. I emailed you a 20 page report a few days ago. Hmm, I don't think I saw that. I'll check. I'm going to check my emails after this. I know I've missed a few, so I'll definitely catch up with them. We could. I, I don't know if we could mail them. I know people were talking about that, but that would be pretty funny. I'm sure she's she knows about it. It's pretty crazy that you can be inside prison and still know and be keeping up with what people are saying about you online. That's Letitia for you. She cares more about what people think about her than she cares about anything. Um, so I wanted to just put these in there. They were from around the time of her arrest. Now, remember, we went through the file and talked about, oops, her tripping. This will be the last one we go through today. There's more I have, but I'll, I'll put them out to you guys somehow, and you have the link as well. So... I just thought this was, you know, interesting to read. We have watched the monster thing. We talked about her hissing at that girl and tripping on the way in and stuff. But this kind of really should have been in that video. I just didn't know it was there at the time because the file is crazy. On March 2nd, Detective Riley, I, Detective Riley, along with Bethel, conducted follow-up on this case. At 9 a.m., we arrived at Myrtle Beach, um, the FBI in Myrtle Beach. After a briefing of the upcoming operation to arrest Letitia Stalk, Detective Bethel and I accompanied FBI Special Agent Andrew Cohen and Jonathan Grusing to the Coastal Grand Mall. This is the location where Mrs. Stalk's daughter, Harley, had a scheduled meeting with the United States Air Force recruiter. At or around 10 a.m., Miss Stalk arrived in the parking lot of the mall and dropped off Harley near the entrance to the recruiting office. After dropping Harley off, Miss Stalk drove around the outer portions of the parking lot before parking. Once Miss Stalk's vehicle was parked, Myrtle Beach Police Department SWAT members affected the arrest of Miss Stalk. She was transported to the Myrtle Beach Police Department Annex in Myrtle Beach for an interview. I accompanied Special Agent Cohen to the recruiting office to interview Harley. This interview was video recorded by Agent Cohen and audio recorded by me. This interview will be documented in a future supplement. After the interview was completed with Harley, she was taken to the Myrtle Beach Police Department. She arrived at 11 a.m. and was accompanied by a social worker. So she was not of age yet. After arriving at the Myrtle Beach Police Department, she signed a search waiver for her tel telephone. Then Agent Cohen and I responded to 109 Campania Street in Myrtle Beach to interview a friend of Miss Stalk. She was identified as Deitra Moss. I was present for only a short time of the interview with Miss Moss. During the portion of the interview I was present, Miss Moss indicated Miss Stalk had only told her about blank about Gannon running away. It does not appear Miss Stalk gave any other blank of why she came to South Carolina. Why is that blanked out? Why is that redacted? It does not appear Miss Stout gave any other blank of why she came to South Carolina. I did not record the interview of Miss Moss. While we were at Miss Moss residence, a search warrant for the home was being completed. 
After completing the interview, I responded to the police annex where Letitia was being interviewed. The interview was conducted by Jonathan Grusing, that interview we all know about. So after the interview with Miss Delk was completed, I learned she was taken to the hospital for a reported miscarriage. It was reported by detectives that Letitia did not have a miscarriage and had attempted to claim she was infected with coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Neither of these were found to be true. And she was cleared medically and housed at the Myrtle Beach Police Department until March 3rd when she was transported to another facility in South Carolina. The passenger van Letitia was driving at the time of her arrest was processed by the FBI. While processing the contents, a suitcase was removed. On the inside flap of the suitcase, suspected blood was found. A blanket inside the van also had blood on it. All items were recovered by the FBI, and we have looked at pictures of that suitcase and that blanket. Can I send a penny to her jail account? I don't know. I didn't even go to, like, she sent me in those messages. Because you can put money on that app, but that is not for her. That's, I guess you can put money on her there for her to text you, but like to send her actual money and one of her messages, she's like, don't forget it's accesscorrections.com and then a bunch of numbers. So when she sent that, I Googled it and screenshot it to show the gins, but I didn't actually look into it to see like how much you could. I just sent you two letters that were sent to Letitia by Mel admirers. Oh my God almighty. What? Jen, do you, do you or Jen want to come up? If you do, you can. I'm going to drop the link. And if you, if you can't, that's okay. But let me see. I think I found George Glass. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Okay, let me forward this over to so we can look at it. <laughs> he spelled his name wrong. Wait, I didn't drop the link. There it is. Oh, awesome. Yay. Melissa, you come up too. I should send these to you, Melissa, because I was I literally thought about you laughing at these at the um in one of the ones I just read. Oh, the coronavirus. Yeah, like literally I thought I like heard Melissa's laugh where it says it was reported to detectives. Miss Stalk did not have a miscarriage and attempted to claim she was infected with coronavirus. Hey, Bronco. Oh, OK, Shauna. That's interesting. When I write my nephew, we have to buy what is called stamps. We have to send him one so he can write back. I feel like Harley was Tisha's best friend. She has none. She stayed with her daughter's friend, which was weird. The, uh, yeah. We'll stop there with the thing. And let me go to these PDFs that Curious Jen sent. Chase Anderson. 31 years old. Hmm. Chase Anderson letter to Letitia. Oh my God almighty. What are we getting into? And let me go ahead and download the other one just so we have it open. Oh, there you are. Hello. Hello. What you doing? I am sitting outside in the gazebo watching it rain. Ooh. I love uh oh, that. but I have an echo. Oh, I don't hear the echo. Hmm. That's weird. Let me pop out and come back. Okay. Okay. What's he in for? Let me guess. It's a $10 minimum. 
Chase Anderson, register number, unit, oh God. So an inmate from the jail, I'm, I can't wait to ask her about this. I guess an inmate from the jail wrote her in jail. Oh my God, March 5th of 2020. Lord have mercy. She really, she talks about having a dude. I cannot believe this. Hey, family gal. Thank you. Thank you for being here too. Hold up. Hello. Hi. Okay. It was because I took the link from YouTube and I didn't close YouTube. That's why. Oh, okay. What in the world is this? An inmate writing her? <laughs> Merry Christmas. Uh, there are two. So George Glass, number one, uh, his name is Chase Anderson, and he's locked up over there where they're keeping Patrick crazy, although he might be out by now. I did look up because as you read the letter, you'll see that he thinks he's getting out soon. Um, he also is quite fond of his own intelligence. Uh, I can see why he's attracted to Letitia, but but yeah, let's read the letter and I'll tell you the rest. Merry Christmas. Oh my God, this is so funny. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, let me ask you something before we read it. Do you know yes, these texting apps, are they able to message each other? I don't think so. And in fact, so you know how I tried. I tried with everything I had to get a hold of the letters that were sent to her in jail. And they just won't let me have them because they're not public information. The reason I have these is because they were written by other inmates and that's a no-no so it goes into part of the public record but like if it's just me writing a letter to Letitia or you writing a letter to Letitia they're not going to give that out and I kind of gave them the Chris Watts argument right because um you know we got to see a bunch of Chris Watts letters that's because it was part of discovery and you know uh, so that was <laughs> Listen, Jade, I love you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mustisha. <laughs> I must ask you a question. I had to make it bigger for a second. <laughs> yeah. So the reason these are public record is because they were written by other inmates and that's, you know, that's not supposed to happen. So, so we wow. have these two letters, one from D'Angelo and one from Chase. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, you want me to read it real fast? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh my God. I just cannot get over this. <clears throat> so March 5th of 2020. Hey, Tisha. What's up, girl? Sorry to hear about your arrest. If you want a pen pal, feel free to write me. Being locked up sucks and can get very boring. Boring. I turned 28 on March 11th. Weigh 176 pounds, dark brown hair, hazel eyes, half German and half Italian. Have almost a full color tattoo sleeve and on right arm. Half black gray realism tattoo sleeve on left arm athletic build been training to box for over a year now when i was 23 i was arrested i was a senior at colorado state university long story short a college girl called woof and something and framed me in a sexual assault case it was consensual but i was a dick and said some mean things and two college chicks framed me i slept with both of them i went to jury trial acquitted aggravated burglary and convicted essay i received an indeterminate four to life sentence to doc because i wouldn't plead guilty to a crime i didn't commit the da indicted me on an unsoluble four-year-old case for burglaries with no real evidence. At second jury trial, I was convicted of all counts. I received 12 years um, consecutive. My sentence is four to life um, or 16 years, but the four to life is minimum four years, maximum natural life. I've been locked up for five years nearly now. I went to university, studied law for a long time. I have some advice for you. Every inmate is a potential witness against you. Do not talk to anyone. They will proffer to get a better deal or testify against you. If you can get into PC, do it. Don't talk to anyone except your court-appointed lawyer. If you take a plea deal, expect to do 75% of the number minus good time. 24-year sentence equals 18 years. 
If you lose that trial, it's life without parole. Recently, there was a big case in Colorado. Patrick Frazee. Wow, no body. I haven't talked to him, but he's here. The DA used a jailhouse informant against him. It was their star witness. He gave the dude handwritten notes. Don't give anyone anything. The DA... Dan May is corrupt as fuck. He chases high-profile cases. Don't trust him for a second. If you are feeling lonely, feel free to write me. I am pretty attractive. I can send photos. <laughs> oh, my God. If the jail allows DOC pics, I'm not a weirdo. That is if you want a hot guy to write letters to, LOL. More advice. Don't get write-ups, more charges. They can use that shit against you in trial and use it against you in prison. As long as you don't judge me, I won't judge you. I'm a pretty badass lawyer, too. I'm about to beat my cases. I hope at least if I, if no, if no, if you want to write me, you have to put my full name, DOC number, on the envelope, plus the address. address. I'll write more next time. Keep your head up. Take it one day at a time. Sincerely. Chase, just trying to look out for you, baby. Jail is shocking and is full of potential traps for real, though. What the? What? I went ahead and included pics. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. Okay. Are both him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is Chase. Interesting. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Go these ahead. Are, these are letters he's written to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. He, and is he a real lawyer? <laughs> well, I'm not sure, but he does have a, a pretty attractive, or I mean, athletic build, and he's a hot guy. <laughs> like, I'm not a weirdo, but you are. <laughs> like, why are you even, first of all, I could just see Leticia like writing back with one sentence, like, what's your favorite position? <laughs> <laughs> but you uh, well, weirdo. if this is like, I can't, I don't understand. Like there, you have to have a fetish. If this is like where you're seeking out relationships that you, there has to be a kick with that. No offense, but. Oh, wait till you see the next letter. Oh my God. Yeah. Wait. So, so Chase here is also, um, <laughs> A jailhouse lawyer. I mean, I can only imagine the letters back and forth between them. Oh, you know? oh my God Almighty. I would love to see that because of that fact that he is this jailhouse lawyer and he's given her all these tips and stuff. And that actually pisses me off. I don't want anybody. I didn't want, you know, giving her a heads up about anything, but wow. Right. Okay, hold on. Let me yeah, drop so that again because I, I messed up. Go ahead. That's George Glass number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Melissa. You guys go check out their channels because they're both covering this. Curious Jen, you should do a bedtime, like a short bedtime thing reading these letters because they're mm, too creepy. I never so seen it. them before. <laughs> <laughs> too uh, creepy. Was this yeah, plus time? there's plus I own, I only have the two letters, so it wouldn't be very long at all. I just wanted to share them with you guys. Oh, I'm so glad you did. Was it in, Melissa, Melissa said, was it in the case file? It was in the original case file, yeah. Interesting. Okay, D'Angelo Jones. Yeah. Oh, look at get this. A get a bucket ready. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, his writing is tough to read. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Letitia, hello, and how are you? Crazy, huh? The way that things are playing out. I thought you might need a tip. Wait, a what? A a something uplift, a little uplifting because, hey, you are going to be pummeled up, down, left, right. And I feel your pain and maybe I can help you ease that by being a pen pal or however God allows me to help. Bitch, you going to be wrecked. <laughs> You're gonna be pummeled up, down. <laughs> what? And if you want, that's if you want to avoid like, any BS, you can just read it without it being on the screen. That's almost like oh, if so you know you what I mean. Humongous. Hold back. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep reading it though. It says, 
I don't, but I took it off, but now y'all just see the other letter. But it says, I don't want to talk about the case, nor do I care. Who are you and what are you about? Anyway, you should know that I think that your deep eyes are incredibly captivating. Oh, my God. And your dark hair against your fair skin is taboo to my body and mind and soul. (laughs) I would like to know you if you are willing just friendship, if only because you need, you may need it or want to. Hope to hear from you. A friend to listen. God bless, D'Angelo Jones. Oh my God, Almighty! Your dark hair. Uh, it wasn't naturally dark, but that's what happens when all the grease builds up. It gets a couple of shades darker. <laughs> oh my my! Your fair skin is taboo to my body <laughs> okay so you know the screenshot i sent you earlier ali the image of Letitia yes. on the 29th okay so yes. you should put that up and then read that just read that one sentence again <laughs> okay <laughs> hold on <laughs> i gotta grab it because i don't have my phone with me just one sec <laughs> oh, oh my gosh you can do better chase That is crazy, but look at his record, you know? He's got, so four to life, and on this one, three to three, six years, six years, three years, 18 months, six years. I mean, damn, he's got four to life. Mm -hmm. He's innocent. That's a, (laughs) wait, four years to life? Yeah, that's the first time I've ever heard that, too. Yeah, that's a very big range. (laughs) What kind of crime? Gives you four, either four years or life, one or the other. (laughs) (laughs) Four to life, one way or the other. (laughs) Such a big range. Oh my God. Okay, ready? Here is, hold on, actually, I'm going to forward it to this other account. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Oh my God, I just can't get over this. So maybe there is a guy messaging her. I mean, damn, you know. Then like, KPM says Chase was framed. <laughs> For the life. Uh oh. Okay, hold on. Well, I logged out on one window, but my other window was still logged in, and it re- it logged in both accounts, like both windows to the same account. Let's hope she never crab walks out of prison. That's what mm-hmm. makes it. So your windows in prisons are this big? <laughs> <laughs> I don't always tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but when I do, I don't. Well, and didn't Letitia say something about, you know, about her boyfriend and, and how they have an open relationship, you know, and they both get hall passes. Oh, By yeah. hall passes, does she mean like kites or, <laughs> I mean, and of course you have an open relationship as as opposed to what? It oh, my God. Like- What did you say, Melissa? It was so quiet. I couldn't hear you. Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, does she have a boyfriend now? She because claims. She does. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I turned your she mic calls him. She calls what? him the dude. Oh, God. Oh my God, it's the first time in history. She calls him dude. Is that what you said? I, I can't remember yeah. the messages off the top of my head. Okay, she, so she calls look him at, her dude. My look dude. At that beautiful, sweet, fair face, as he says. Your dark hair against your fair skin is taboo to my body <laughs> and mind and soul. Well, and her sucking in eyes. That's called lack of sleep and drugs, my dude. Yeah, and evil. Like, look at right. those eyes. That first court appearance of her, like, actually, I'm going to pull that up really fast. That she, I'm telling you, she definitely looks like there's a demon inside of her during that. 
You too. So uh, I'm excited. What What do you guys, so I know out of the jail file, we've talked about the peanut butter threat a little bit and I showed Melissa, but yeah. um, I wonder what else we're going to find in there. And also that peanut butter threat. Oh, I cannot wait till we get our copy so we can, because, oh my God, the handwriting. It's just, she's such a fucking idiot. Did you show yeah. that? No. Oh, because, God. yeah. No, I haven't shown it because that creator, I just don't need the trouble. Even yeah. though for me, anything and everything that I put out, if if it's about a case or something, anybody can use it. Like, I don't know if it's about awareness. Don't you want people to use it? To me, it's only if you're going to like use, like say you use one of my panels of me and my friends to like talk shit about me or my friends, then I'm, I would have a problem with it. Otherwise, no. <laughs> Right. Well, and it falls under fair use. You didn't. You don't get to tell people that it's it's against the law to screenshot my YouTube video and even use a screenshot of one of my videos. It, it's it's not it's just because you write it doesn't make it true. Right. Yeah. But I don't want to go down that road. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just let us look at this for a moment, and while we talk, this is that first appearance in South Carolina, and. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. She just, you remember those pictures of Chris Watts after his arrest and he just <laughs> looked demonic. She does in this to me. Eyes turned dark. They really did. At porch interview, they were dark. Yeah. Yeah. Teabag. Oh, my lips are chapped from the prison porn. Oh my God. I'm mighty. Well, you know what? There's lots of desperate losers in prison that are guys. So. Um, I'm sure she probably does have a couple guys talking to her. But hey, addicted. You know she smells. I'm sorry, but like you, you know she does. She is not an hygienic person whatsoever. Well, uh, let me ask you guys while you're up here, just because of the like the few documents I went through today, um, which I know you have the file, but I can send you if you want them, Melissa, just so you have them closed. But uh, number one, that his phone and his switch being found. What do you guys think about that? What was the purpose of this switch? What was the role of the switch in this whole thing? Like, that's one of the things that puzzles me. Yeah, for me, it's still a mystery. Um, I do think it's important. I haven't quite zeroed in on why it's so important. I do think that, you know, Letitia is the one who stashed it there behind the DVDs. Um, if I had to guess, I would have say that she did that on the 31st, but I'm just guessing. I don't know that. Um, but I think that she had some sort of intention to use it to try and set somebody up. Yep. I agree. It's something that's important. I agree with you. It's important. And that would, that would make sense. I've also wondered what Tabitha said, if she used it during the struggle or what do you think, Melissa? So it was found with the yeah. DVDs. Yeah. So it was found. Let me go back to that. It was found behind while Al, while they were moving their stuff out of the house, um, Al found it and he called police to come over and get it. Also, they found his cell phone in one of the reports that I went through today. But she was using his cell phone to message and call Landon with the night of the 27th. Yeah. So it was never missing, right? It was never officially missing, no. Yeah. But unless she went and hit it after that, which it was obvious that would have been her. Right. right. So the house it, was sealed off as a crime scene. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Oh, uh, the house was sealed off as a crime scene from February 7th to February 27th. When Albert was allowed back in the house on the 27th, he started moving out right away. And on the 28th, as he was packing up, you know, that section of the house and putting those DVDs in a box, that's when he found the switch. So nobody found it through all those searches and 20 days of the house being sealed, all the searches that happened before that the walkthrough parade with the district attorneys and the detectives and the sheriffs and all of that. Nobody found it that whole time. Um, but Albert found it on the 28th hidden behind DVDs. That's and it doesn't say what TV. It doesn't say upstairs, downstairs. Um, but if I had to guess, I would guess upstairs because, you know, it would have been Letitia hiding it. So 
remember she spent the night on the 28th and she was in the room by herself. Albert was out on the couch. And so that would have been a prime time to hide it or she would have hidden it on the 31st when they were getting their stuff because the deputies weren't paying attention to what they were bringing in, only what they were bringing out. Okay, see if, <clears throat> I've always been curious as us all, what she used to cause the blunt force trauma. And mm -hmm. yes, the, the switch has always been um, one of the biggest contenders because in the infamous last photo that was taken of Gannon in his bed, he has the switch on the blanket. And so then for the switch to go missing and then in her Google searches and includes, can my parents find, you know, can Nintendo find my switch? Um, but I really feel like that the switch would have with the damage that was done to Gannon, the switch would have evidence of that and blood residue on it. And there was nothing indicative, indicative of that. Right. Yeah, not, not only that, but they released the switch right away and it ended up in Landon's possession. So we, a lot of people thought that we saw the switch at trial. But if you pay very close attention to that section of testimony, what we saw was the case for the switch. And we know that the switch was recovered. But if you pay very close attention to that uh, section of testimony, the switch was not in that courtroom. It was not in the evidence like the case was because they actually released the switch and it was it ended up in Landon's possession long before trial, um, which you know up, upset some people. But if it would have had any sort of evidence, you know, there's no way in hell they would have done that. Right. Um, but they were they were real careful with how they presented you know that that evidence, um, and and they kind of led us to believe that the switch was there and. You know, the, the witness has it in his hand. Well, he has the case in his hand. The case was empty at trial. See, well, then that leads me to believe she was going to try to put that switch somewhere to lead people to believe that's where Gannon had been. Right. And then at some point she realized it was a liability, so she hid it in the house. Yeah. This is where on February 27th, I conducted a follow-up um, at 5.15. I got a phone call from Al. I was told his daughter had found Gannon's phone. Arrangements were made for Detective Price to retrieve the phone from Al on February 27th. Um, and then the last one I wanted to ask you guys about before I let before I let you guys go. I know Melissa has a live at 7. Amber's on at like 8.15. I moved it. Oh, she's on at 8.15. Or 8.30, yeah, something like that. And then or she used to do 8.45, and then somebody's on it after. I don't know if Jen's going. Jen, let us know if you're going tonight. But look at this really quick, and then I'll let you guys go. Um, so this is a school counselor of Lena's, and she called the police in, on the 28th of February and reports this conversation she had with Lena on the 27th. So her name's Mrs. Devine. Mrs. Devine said Lena told her how she moved into a new apartment with her dad, but not her stepmom. Mrs. Devine said when Lena mentioned her stepmom, she put two thumbs down. Lena told Mrs. Devine her stepmom made Gannon disappear. Lena said her stepmom said she took him out with the carpet. Mrs. Devine said she did not know what that meant and changed the subject. She felt the statement was odd, and Mrs. Devine did mention she believed Lena has overheard the parents talking. The conversation concluded. So I thought that was interesting to see kind of Lena talking to her um, school counselor, you know, and her saying what she said. I just, I feel sorry for Lena. That's so sad to sit there and know that your brother's out there missing. Think about it. You're eight years old. What do you know about the world and life and everything? And all you know is your brother is all of a sudden gone. And a lot of people are mad at your stepmom. She's not living with you anymore. And, you know, you're hearing these rumors. She said, she said her stepmom said she took him out with the carpet. It's yeah, sad. that's just crazy. It's really sad. Yeah. Because how do you even how do you wrap your mind around any of this at eight years old? I just can't imagine. Oh my God, and we can't do it. <laughs> that that part that you just read about his phone that really makes me wonder 
if she didn't take his phone. You know, I know that they talked about the phone at the Starbucks interview on the 28th, um, but we don't know what happened to the phone after that. And and if they had to call because Lena found it when they got back into the house and were moving stuff out, yeah, that makes that really makes it sound like she had taken it. Although nowhere else does it say, you know, his phone disappeared. I guess we could look at at you know when they did the testing on the phone. Yeah. Now there is one other document I found today that is about his phone, but look, it's this one uh, about <clears throat> here. It says um, on Wednesday, I detective Marissa Williams with other detectives followed up on this case. I learned information relating to Letitia's use of Gannon's phone was important to the case, but what they did was just use the search, re the search warrants from AT&T. For this and they're talking about her using his phone with connie right her, yeah so and you know what else what is was interesting is how leticia when messaging the detectives um mentioned how she could hear everything that was going on inside of the house <sighs> while they were there searching with harley there and they had to shut off all the Wi-Fi and all of the devices because whatever, I don't know if it was Amazon, like with the Alexa and stuff, but she had access and was listening in to what all the detectives were saying while they were at that house searching, which in reality, in hindsight, was a really stupid thing to do as a guilty party. If you had access <laughs> to hear what they were saying, you should have kept that to yourself, but you told them. But the fact that she was even listening in through, I don't know what device is insane. Oh if she God. even was, I mean, you know, she's a liar. Yeah, she is a liar. It could have been Harley relaying to her what they were right. saying. Yeah. Right. Melissa, did you say you moved your lab? Yeah, I had originally moved it to 7.30, but I didn't realize uh, Amber was going live. Okay, so you're going to move it back to 7? Yeah, I'll get on as quickly as I can. Awesome. Okay. Boko Maru. So you guys in here, if you want to go over to Melissa's at seven, Amber's at 815 to 845. I don't remember exactly because she's kind of switch experimenting, I think a little bit with her time, but I will share them on the community tab as well. Here, let me put them in the chat. And then I don't know, is Jen planning a live tonight? Have you heard anything curious, Jen? Or studies? I'm not <laughs> sure. I don't think so. Live and I didn't see one scheduled. Okay. Well, we'll just drop when the I link. At 7 30, I had looked because I didn't want to go over and then I didn't realize ATS had one. Well, you know, I try to do it too. It's hard, but yes. it's nice to have people though that we can work together and at least try to bend and, yeah. and move when we can. Um, if you guys have want to look at this file and get more, go to Crown Curious's website. She um, hey, Kaylin, she does an awesome job. Truly, I'm telling you, every single, I don't know, your brain is so good with detail. And I think that, I don't know, I think that if I was a regular viewer, which I am a viewer, but just putting myself in that situation and I wanted to find somewhere to go to get all the information, it is the absolute perfect spot because she has a, about five different cases that she's got reports on. Stalk, you hit this because this link won't take you directly to Stout, but hit the Stout case. And then you will see, I'm talking about the insurance, like her suing the jail, just everything, anything and everything that's been put out, it's there. So, well, thanks yeah. for having me up, Allie. Thank you. thank you so much yeah. for coming up. And thank you, Curious Jen. And thank you for sharing those letters with us. I, I still can't believe that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to end it, you guys. I love you all. I hope to see you guys tonight on those channels. I'll share them on the link. This week, we have lots of good stuff coming. I can't wait. Woo I know. Bye, it's guys. Fun. But all right. I love you all and hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>